I've got five days to build a demo app in .NET MAUI. But the problem is I've never used MAUI before besides trying it briefly over a year ago. So let's see how it goes. I've got the top of the line MacBook Pro with the M2 Max chip over here. And that should be able to handle it just fine, even though I'm gonna be running Windows on a Mac. Of course, you can build MAUI apps and VS Code on a Mac, but I'm a bit stubborn and I like to use Visual Studio for .NET projects. I think it offers the best experience for .NET development. Writer fans, huh? insert your angry comment below right now. I know it's coming. Microsoft seems to be paying more attention to ARM. They released .NET and Visual Studio that are fully ARM native now. So theoretically, this should work well now. My goal today is to get a simple Hello World app working in .NET MAUI. Let's see how it goes. I've read a bunch of MAUI docs and watched some YouTube tutorials, just enough to get the basic idea of how MAUI works and just to get me started. I'm kind of nervous because, well, it's a mix of all kinds of technologies. It's .NET, I've got it deployed to iOS and Android, and I'm running everything on a virtual machine. I don't know if I'll make it, but I'm super excited to try and get this to work. All right, I've been at this for a while. I got this thing set up. Everything seems to be right, but it just won't start. The Android emulator is just stuck. It's stuck showing this. And I just, I can't get past that. It's been like that for 10 minutes now. So I decided to call James. Hey James, welcome. Yeah, good to see you again, Alex. How's it going? James actually works with the Maui team at Microsoft and he knows it inside and out. He also has a pretty cool YouTube channel. Go check it out. I'll link to it down below. I'm ready. All right, check this out. I'm on a Mac. I'm running a Parallels virtual machine, Windows for ARM, and I'm trying to develop an Android app there. Ooh, impossible. <laughs> but the problem is hyper ne or like nested virtualization, right? And nothing can help right. you because the Android emulator is not a simulator. So it's mm -hmm. an emulator emulating the environment. Okay, so based on that conversation, looks like I'm gonna have to get a Windows laptop. Based on previous experience, my favorite Windows laptop is actually an XPS 15 by Dell. I've tested previous versions of this laptop on this channel before, but now the 13th generation Intel chips are out. The new Dells have them, and they also have the NVIDIA RTX 40 series, which is the graphics card. Okay, here comes a Dell. Oh man, they moved the delivery date. Oh man, I gotta get this now. Luckily I got a local computer store I can go to and I came across a 13th generation Intel machine. It's an Asus VivoBook, not very expensive, but it's also not super powerful either. It does not have an Nvidia card, but it's that Intel CPU that I'm mostly interested in because an Intel based machine has Haxam and that's Intel's hardware execution manager, which has been known to significantly improve Android emulator performance. My biggest struggle right now is iteration. That's the cycle between making a change in code and being able to see its effects on the resulting app. For me at least, this cycle needs to be as fast as possible. It's like a chef cooking food and then periodically tasting it, but maybe a little more frequently than a chef tastes food. The Asus is not too bad. Uh, I just feel like it can be faster. When I'm developing on a Mac and I'm using the iOS simulator, it just pops right up. Here, I can't use the iOS simulator directly. I have to connect it to a Mac remotely. And that's doable, but it really slows down that dev cycle. The Android emulator works here, but it's also slow. With that Intel chip, I was really expecting it to be a lot faster, but it's not. James. I need help again. I'm running this Maui app and I just got started with it and uh, I wanna know the quickest way to iterate. You know, I come from a web development background where I make a change and I instantly see it. So I want that gratification of instant pleasure of seeing my app running in a simulator or whatever it may be. What's your preferred method? All right, so this is gonna come to a surprise and a shock to everybody, but if you're on a Windows machine, the fastest way to iterate just deploy to Windows. <laughs> like, um, here, you know, even if you're not building a Windows app, mm -hmm. if you just go to your Windows machine, uh, it installs faster, it builds faster, it deploys faster because you're on the machine. Additionally, if you're on a Mac machine, deploy to your Mac because there's no simulators, there's no emulators, there's nothing in between. Android emulators are like the best and the worst because you're like, <laughs> let me specify these things, but they bog down your machine. They use a lot of memory. So I use yeah. the Windows subsystem for Android, which is better, but then I just plug in a device and I'm good. 
After my call with James, I did try deploying right to Windows and it works pretty fast. And I also tried Windows Subsystem for Android. And this, in my opinion, is the best way to iterate. It worked really fast and the controls that you get resemble an Android emulator, which is actually the closest that I've gotten, closer than just deploying to Windows. So this got me to a point where I could actually build out a lot of this app. The problem is that I only have one day to finish this demo. Just got an alert that it's here. <laughs> Let's go get it. Oh, oh shit. This office is too tight. I got the Dell. Since I got the new Dell, I thought I might as well make a video on setting this up for software development. And I made that video. You can find the link right down below in the description underneath the like button. Now, as somebody who uses the MacBook Pro daily, it's always a bit of a transition period when going back to Windows for me. But one of the reasons I like the Dell XPS 15 in particular is that out of all the PC laptops I tried, it has a very similar feel from a physical standpoint to a MacBook. Yeah, the keyboard is not quite as clicky as the MacBook, but still extremely comfortable. The screen was really nice and it certainly blew the Asus machine out of the water completely, but we're talking about a very different uh, price point for this machine. It also seemed a lot more performant than the VivoBook, even running the Android emulator itself without a problem. But to be fair, it was a 32 gigabyte machine and the VivoBook was only 16 gigabytes and the Dell was significantly more expensive than the VivoBook, so not a cheap laptop at all. And about the same price as a 14 inch Mac MacBook Pro with the same SSD and RAM size. Needless to say that developing a .NET MAUI app on this machine was a pleasure and a far cry from my first experience on a virtual machine on the Mac. I took this Dell with me to my second favorite office, aka Starbucks, to finish off the project. And at this point I've only got this one day to finish off this demo. I don't think I'm gonna make it. As I continued working on this app, I realized that there is one piece of advice that James gave me that I could have taken and probably saved a bunch of money. He said, if you're on a Windows machine, the fastest way to iterate, just to play to Windows. This relates to the first part of development, the early stages. As far as the later stages of development, there is a little bit of a different workflow and I'll talk about that in a second. But guess what? I tried this on the virtual machine on my Mac just the way I started and it works perfectly. In fact, it's really fast too. After a lot of tweaking and tuning, I've put together a nice little demo app, which is an issue tracker concept that I use for most of my courses. But while Maui does come with a lot of controls out of the box, I wanted to add a few things that you just don't get, like a chart control and tabs. You can do tabs with Maui out of the box, but they're not consistent across platforms. I wanted a consistent look and I wanted the app to look and feel a lot better and provide easier functionality. And the real cherry on top is displaying a grid of data, an editable grid and an automatically generated data form control. And this is where Telerik UI for .NET MAUI comes in handy. I was able to simply add a NuGet package to my project and drop in the control controls I wanted. Now they do have basic controls like your buttons, your inputs, your sliders, and they all add extra functionality to the default controls that come with MAUI. But the really juicy parts is where they give you the chart controls. You can have different kinds of charts. There's the grid control, which is an editable grid, something that would take you a long time to develop yourself. And the data form control is there as well. Uh, basically, it just generates a data form automatically, but you can customize it if you want to. Progress sponsored this portion of the video, so thank you Progress. And they're also giving Telerik UI for .NET MAUI to one of you. Check the description down below for details. So I did end up finishing the demo app, but I failed the challenge of getting it done in five days. It was a bit of a roller coaster though, and I learned quite a few things along the way. The number one thing I learned, which I kind of knew already, but for some reason I thought I was above the law in this case, Use the right tool for the job. Apple Silicon has been amazing and it's really moving tech forward, in my opinion. Microsoft is even jumping in and planning their own ARM chips to follow suit. Way to go, Microsoft. But if you want to build something with a complex tech stack, like a .NET MAUI application, use the right tools. I recently got an email from Max, someone who watches this channel, and after doing some tests, he confirmed that Android emulators just won't work on Windows for ARM yet at least not in any meaningful, usable way. And the best experience for developing iOS is still on a Mac. 
So you might just need to develop using both a Mac and a PC after all, if you want to target all the platforms. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and I will see you next time.